Before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to my sister, Amy Archibald Varley, and Sarah Fung, who are both nurses and hosts of the popular The Gritty Nurse podcast, which I edit, for the release of their new book, The Wisdom of Nurses, Stories of Grit from the Front Lines. When the COVID pandemic hit, the occupation most affected was the nursing profession, as they had to wear so many hats, endure all sorts of insanely long hours, and even sometimes encounter dangerous patients. The Wisdom of Nurses from Amy's and Sarah's View gives us a first-hand look at the compassion, selflessness, and dedication of these nurses who not only give it all for their patients, but get up and do it over again and again. Amy and Sarah have quickly become sought after speakers and advocates for nurses and are called on regularly by the media to talk about a wide range of issues around the profession. I have my signed copy because my sister, like the book, is awesome. Be sure to pick this up at any bookstore, order it online through Amazon.com or GreedyNurse.com, or you can even get an audiobook if you're too lazy to read. Pick up the wisdom of nurses today. You won't regret it. Welcome to So Big Movies, and this is Around the World in 24 Frames, where I highlight foreign films, and my goal is to hopefully turn people on to foreign language films and non-English language speaking films that maybe they would only find on the Criterion Collection. On this special premiere episode, we are going to highlight one of my favorite movies of all time, one of my essential movies, and a film that is near unanimously praised as one of the greatest action films and greatest movies of all time. Before there was Shogun, there was Akira Kurosawa's The Seven Samurai. ある難関の小さな村に侍の墓が4つ並んだ野心と巧妙に疲れた狂気の時代に全く名利を顧み哀れな百姓たちのために戦った七人の侍の話 Whenever the opportunity arises for me to introduce a foreign language film to a foreign virgin, this is the one I always fall back on. In my opinion, Kurosawa's sweeping epic is ground zero for those who want to try a film outside of North America for the first time. To me, this is Japan's answer to Casablanca, a film that is both artful and entertaining, and it carries all of these themes of love, respect, doing the right thing, having a sense of community, and the individual spirit. Plus, it's just full of samurai. I mean, samurai going sword crazy on everyone. Who doesn't love that? Some filmmakers just have it. That intangible that enables them to write a story or see the world through a different set of eyes and present to us a truly unique vision. Spielberg has it. Orson Welles had it. Scorsese has it. Alfred Hitchcock had it. Charlie Kaufman and David Mamet have it. Akira Kurosawa was born with it. It is nearly impossible to find a bad movie with his name attached to it. Even the ones that weren't up to par with his greater works are still better than most films released around the world today. In my mind, there are very few perfect movies. Some directors are lucky enough to get one under their belt, but I believe Kurosawa has four. Along with The Seven Samurai, he also directed Rashomon, Yojimbu, and Ikiru. And there are other well-regarded films under his resume, such as Ron, The Hidden Fortress, and The Bad Sleep Well. But Samurai is, was, and continues to be the master's opus. The story takes place in feudal Japan. Communities have been ransacked by a group of pillagers who take advantage of the women and steal rice and other crops. A member of one such village 
Tanks note that the bandits have just raided a community nearby and seem to be heading their way. The village is already under enormous distress as it is, but this news is apocalyptic. They sit amongst each other on the dry land and attempt to decide how to cope with these new developments. Do they give some of their crops? Do they burn them? Do they hide their wives and their daughters? Kill them rather than have them go through the pain and humiliation of being raped? One suggestion turns the group on its ear. Hire a band of samurai to protect the villagers. The potential ramifications are great. Samurai are expensive, they are rogues, they are men with sexual urges who will be among young daughters and they kill. But what to do? Kill or be killed? To be or not to be, says Hamlet. They decide to hire the samurai under the conditions that they will be paid with only a handful of rice a day. Rice that is already barren. This is a little masterstroke within the plot. The village can't afford protection, so who would be willing to risk their lives for a measly handful of rice a day? Roger Ebert said it best in his review for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon that the best martial arts movies have nothing to do with fighting and everything to do with personal excellence. This is one of those circumstances. Any samurai who bear this burden are not looking for glory or money. They are looking for a challenge. Examples. Examine closely how each of the samurai are introduced by displaying their individual skill. Their dialogue and camaraderie is rooted within their desire to be better warriors. One samurai shaves his head like a priest before taking out a thief who captures a hostage. One follows another in hopes to be as great as a swordman as his idol. One outright poses to be a samurai in order to bury his impoverished past. Every action team-up film for over 60 years owe a debt to these setup scenes. There is another underlying theme that is at work here in Seven Samurai, and that is the nature of individuals in a caste society. It is the nature of the bandits to rape and pillage. It is the nature of the samurai to protect, and it is the nature of the villagers to fear both. The samurai and the villagers can never coexist in the time and tradition they live in. All groups are bound by society and the roles their labels imply. Watch how the villagers always move in a group, never separately. A subplot involves a forbidden romance between one of the younger samurai and a village girl. Ironically, the same village girl whose father worries she will be raped by a bandit. They can never love each other simply because they are already cast and the roles they are meant to play in their lives. Kurosawa was known to love the films of John Ford, so he must have a John Wayne. He had two, Takashi Shimura, who plays the wise leader Kambi, and Toshiro Mifune as the imposter, carrying a sword too long like a rifle and swagger that would put T.I. to shame. Both these men were involved in some way in every film Kurosawa made for 18 years and are essential to the plot of Seven Samurai. Shimura's calm strategist is a perfect foil to Mufune's impulsiveness. The film is 207 minutes with an intermission, but it is perhaps one of the fastest moving three hours because the story is so clear and easy to follow. We watch as Kanbei map out the strategy with the village to take down each of the 40 bandits one by one. Kurosawa may be the greatest action director of all time, a master of creating human ties, in which many sweep from a higher plane to a lower one and kept with the action, panning and following it along instead of the cut cut shaky cam editing of some of today's films. Lord of the Rings battle scenes? Kurosawa did it first. He would also use deep focus photography to show action in the foreground and background using a barrier to demonstrate distance. This is considered by many critics and film buffs as the first film to feature a team up. So this movie is pretty much ground zero for films like The Dirty Dozen, The Guns of Navarone, The Avengers, and The Expendables. And if this plot sounds vaguely familiar, that's because it is the same plot used for The Magnificent Seven, which was a remake of The Seven Samurai. 
The great irony and stroke of genius of this film is that it is ripped straight from the Western. And the film actually re-energized that entire genre, despite being on the wrong side of the Pacific Ocean. Kurosawa had always been fond of the Western, signing John Ford to be one of his inspirations, what great director did not, but Kurosawa was able to take Ford's penchant for breathtaking landscape photography and iconic conflicted characters to the next level. In fact, between this, Yojimbo, which was remade as a fistful of dollars and gave birth to the spaghetti westerns, and The Hidden Fortress, which George Lucas cites as his inspiration for Star Wars. It can be argued, even though I think the case is clear, that Kurosawa is the father of the modern action movie. Roger Ebert theorized that the earlier mentioned scene in which Kanbei saves the hostage may be the first that created the action movie tradition of opening sequences in which the hero shows off his skill by wading into dangerous territory unrelated to the later plot. Something that almost every James Bond film employs. There are deaths in Seven Samurai. That's not a spoiler. Not all will survive. But it is not the lot of the samurai warrior to complain. The villagers will no longer need them, so they will be outcast once again since men of violence inspire chaos where order should exist. It is the way of this world. There is an underpinning in Samurai that shows a divide in Kurosawa's work. In his earlier films, he highlighted the Japanese beliefs of conformity, teamwork, and fitting in. Seven Samurai was the first to give way to characters who are rebels and nonconformists, stereotypically viewed as more of a Western philosophy. The final few shots involving the young samurai and the village girl are important to study. He is seen with his companions, then with the girl, then finally in an uncommitted spot not with the samurai but somehow still among them. Should he do what's best for the samurai, the villagers, or himself? This is the fine line the plot of Seven Samurai walks upon in dealing with individualism versus conformity. And as a non-conformist myself, this movie tickles all of my fancy places. The Seventh Samurai, in my opinion, is one of those rare, perfect films that has a little something for everyone, but it is not dumbed down to cater to its universal plot. In fact, it's the exploration and curiosity of these universal themes that gives Samurai its timelessness. You can interpret it as an action movie with brains or a cerebral film with action. If the film's length is intimidating, treat it as a two-part miniseries and watch up to the intermission in one setting and the second half in another. This is one of the easiest bingeable movies out there. If there is one film anyone wants to use to throw themselves into foreign language, which really isn't a genre, they're just action movies or horror movies that just are non-English language speaking, but if you are looking for one to start on, you cannot go wrong with Kurosawa's magnum opus. Definitely check out The Seven Samurai. What are your thoughts on Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai? Share your thoughts, leave your comments, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you can get notifications as well. Thanks a lot everyone, take care.